Hello and welcome to another edition of Friday Reads and welcome to my channel. This is Lindy's Magpie Reads. Well, so many books, so many books this week. Uh, I'll start with the Irish Readathon. I read one Irish short story by the master Edna O'Brien. The story is called Christmas Roses and it was in this uh, collection, Garden of Reading, which subtitle is an anthology of 20th century short fiction about gardens and gardeners, edited by Michelle Slung. Uh, but the short story actually came out of one of O'Brien's collections called a Rose in the Heart. That was from 1979. Uh, it's a story about um, a woman who had many adventures in her younger life. Now she's getting on in years and she finds satisfaction in gardening and her life is shaken up when she meets a young man. This story is perfect because of the ending, which I didn't see coming and yet just fits so well. Uh, very, very satisfying. The other things I've got for you today, I've got short stories, novels for adults and for kids. I've got mysteries for adults and for kids. I've got books in translation from Argentina and Finland. I've got two books by trans authors. I've got two graphic novels, two picture books, and one teeny tiny poetry anthology. So we're getting right into it. So this is a novel by Sigrid Nunes. What are you going through? Uh, if you like Jenny Offal, actually, if you like Sigrid Nunes, the friend, you'll like this one. Uh, the language, the prose, is something that I'm always looking for in literary fiction and this was fantastic. I copied out a whole bunch of passages into my commonplace book. Um, it is a story about empathy, it's about mortality, it's about our relationships with other people and how they shift over time. Uh, the narrator uh, is <laughs> a fiercely intelligent woman, getting on in years. We're in her head the whole time. Uh, her wry humor comes through and uh, she's recording what she observes and hears from the people around her and in particular a friend of hers who is dying of cancer um, and that friend has a very difficult relationship with her daughter. Sigrid Nunes has things to say about mystery novels um, because through this book she also happens to be reading a mystery novel and I want to read a little bit to you so you get an idea of the prose. It never matters to me how a mystery ends. In fact, I have found that after so many pages of so many twists and turns and other to-do, the ending is usually something of a letdown and the bad guy being caught and ultimately brought to justice or destroyed is invariably the least exciting part of the plot. Feel free to discuss this in the comments below. Uh, one little bit here, no matter how sad, a beautifully told story lifts you up. She wasn't talking about mysteries there. And much has been said about mystery stories being like fairy tales and popular for some of the same reasons, instead of ogres, serial killers. And though they might not be pure of heart, no princes or Galahads or saints, the detectives are still heroes, righteous, if not always noble avengers. All is simplified. Characters, types, moral code, clear. 
where guilt or innocence lie, plain. Plenty of cruelty, violence, and gore. But in the end, the evil are vanquished. And even if the good don't live happily ever after, there is closure. The kind of closure that mostly eludes people in real life. Except that fairy tales are beautiful, my friend said. Fairy tales are sublime, and mysteries are not. More to discuss in the comments, as you wish. And this book also has a difficult mother-daughter relationship. It's called Elena Knows, and it's by Claudia Pinheiro. And this is from uh, Argentina. It's translated by Francis Riddle. And central character, again, an old woman. Uh, she's in her 60s, and she has advanced Parkinson's. She is severely disabled. So what happens at the start of the story, her daughter has died. And Elena feels like um, her death is not being properly investigated. And so she takes matters into her own hands uh, and ventures out. So the whole novel, it's not a long one, takes place within a very compressed time frame, just the course of one day. Um, I don't want to say very much else about what's happening in here to give away something. I'll just say that it's very feminist. And um, if, if you're somebody who feels like dialogue needs to be, you know, carefully delineated, you might not like this. But Elena is going over conversations in her head. So, for example, what her daughter said, what she replied, you know, back and forth, you know, that's all run together. And I found it really easy to follow. Actually, dialogue is similarly handled in Sigrid Nunez's book. Just thought I'd mention that. Uh, so, I love this, and I'm going to count it for my March Mystery Madness. Here's a graphic novel from Finland. So, um, Oksi is by Mari Ahokoivu, and it is translated by Celia Maria Aronpuru. Aronpuro. And also a mother daughter story, although in this case it's a mother bear who has three sons who are cubs, plus a daughter, Poorling, who looks more like a black flame. <laughs> um, if you're familiar with Sean Tan's Eric, that's who I thought of with Poorling. Anyway, there are bears and stars and Finnish folklore and magical runes of like songs. Um, it's the art is very cute and there's also violence. Uh, it is a very um, mysterious sort of story and I loved it and I'm going to read it over again. Um, I'll be show I'll, I'll show you some pictures of what the art is like. Uh, there is Poorling and the mother bear. So you see there's sort of black wash, um, kind of charcoal art, I guess, um, with shades of black. There's um, very much a lot of shades of black in here and mythical creatures and some color uh, just here and there like there's gold on the magical scop um, a little bit of red now and then there are also the northern lights uh, I 
I read this as uh, an adult graphic novel, and then I was surprised to realize that the publisher is Levine Carido, and they're a children's book publisher, so I guess I could call this All Ages. Um, yeah. It's amazing. This one is definitely uh, a middle grade novel, The Robber Girl by Franny Billingsley. The cover is so shiny, I am going to show you the inside. Title page, beautiful book design. Each um, chapter opens with um, these starlings murmuration of starlings, which are significant to the story. Uh, so uh, I can also call this one a book for March Mystery Madness because it's kind of a genre blend. Uh, it does start with a dead body, uh, uh, a stagecoach that's held up by robbers, and someone is killed. But the girl, who's maybe nine, maybe 10, she has an affliction where she can't speak unless she's spoken to. She does have a very sharp dagger and she has conversations with the dagger all the time in her head. Uh, there's magical elements. Um, so in addition to being a mystery, it's a fantasy and also kind of a western and uh, a rollicking kind of story that's about trauma and healing and I highly recommend it. Another March Mystery Madness this one is Beware of Sorrow by Robin Geigel. The author is a trans woman and a lawyer. And in this, this is her debut. It's a, maybe more of a thriller than a mystery. Um, and it features a trans woman lawyer. Uh, I was totally wrapped up, <laughs> totally wrapped up in this thriller because uh, the characters are really well developed. This is my cat's tail. <laughs> that is Frida. <laughs> anyway, uh, yes, great characters. So her second book in this series, it's called Survivor's Guilt. It just came out in January, and I am definitely going to pick it up. Um, the thing about thrillers is if they uh, sacrifice character development um, in order to keep the plot moving forward, I'm just not satisfied. But this one, um, this one doesn't do that. We've got great characters and I'm I'm perfectly happy to keep on going. Um, a lot of times with series, I'm satisfied with the first one and I don't need to read anymore. And this one, I'm, I just love it that uh, this trans uh, lawyer is so badass. So she's just great, just love her. So <laughs> that is Beware of Sorrow. Got another trans author for you in this graphic novel. It's called uh, Cheer Up, Love and Pom Poms. I'm not sure if this is the start of a series or not. Uh, the author is uh, Crystal Frazier and the cartoonist is Val Wise. Um, I know that Val Wise uses they, them pronouns, but I'm not sure how they identify. Anyway, the two main characters in this very sweet story are, um, they're in high school, they're in their last year of high school, and 
um, Annie is a lesbian and um, Bibi is trans and they're both on the cheerleading squad and they've been friends for a long time and their relationship develops into something more so the if you just need something really cute you are a little best if you need something really cute um, I highly recommend this the, there's great character development in here as well um, because the trans character uh, she is a people pleaser she um, she doesn't want people to pay too much attention to her she'll always say you know yes to pretty much to anything she's asked no matter how heavy the load gets and uh, well, she says oh no I couldn't say no I don't want people to get upset with me whereas Annie who's a prickly kind of girl says I say no to people all the time and people love me Annie you're literally hanging out with me because everyone else hates you well I love me and that's what's important an idea about the art. Um, the facial expressions are really um, expressive and there's all kinds of body types as well. So Cheer Up, a really fun graphic novel for, uh, well, probably about grade six and up all the way to adults. Okay, speaking of cheering up, here's a fun picture book. It's a uh, non-fiction picture book. Butterflies are pretty gross. <laughs> and it is by the um, uh, Canadian uh, science uh, comic artist, uh, science communicator, Rosemary Mosco. Although she didn't do the illustrations in here. The illustrations are by Jacob Suva. And uh, I picked this up because Rosemary Mosco has um, a book about pigeons that um, people were talking about that looks really good. And I thought, what else do we have by her? So, um, pigeon watching. That's the pigeon book. So... This one is sort of like a blend between a graphic novel and a picture book. Uh, hi, I'm a butterfly. Everyone knows butterflies are pretty. We flutter through meadows, we pose on fancy flowers, we show off our wings, we shimmer with all the colors of the rainbow. And then there's speech balloons. So majestic. Don't you look lovely? Oh, go on. But then the butterfly warns us, don't turn the page. Close this book. Nothing to see here. <laughs> and then we find out all the things that could be more gross about butterflies, like the fact that, uh, hmm, they like to slurp up the juices of dead bodies and rotten fruit and that uh, some of them have butts that look like heads so that um, when predators go and snatch them, they might lose their butt, but they keep their life cool information about butterflies. And another picture book, um, this one is by Canadian author Yolanda Marshall. And the illustrator is from Russia, lives in Amsterdam now, and her name is Daria Lavrova. And so C is for carnival, and it is about the Caribbean Carnival in Toronto. It's an alphabet book with really lively illustrations. 
Bach Canal, join a band, it's time to party. Follow the band leader and frolic happily. This is Bach Canal, time to celebrate Carnival. So, lots of great vocabulary and explanation about what's happening with Carnival, like emancipation. Uh, August 1st is Emancipation Day, um, when um, the British declared uh, emancipation to black slaves in the 1860s, I think it was, and so that's why Carnival in Canada is usually celebrated in the, um, the first, right in the first part of August. Um, in Trinidad, it is um, at the start of Lent. The, the poetry is it could have been tweaked. I wish that um, Yolanda had Marshall had had a really good poetry editor. Um, sometimes her word choices are just a stretch. Um, here we have Queen and King of Carnival. Queens and Kings represent your mass bands floating energetically across the stage for the parade judges in the stands. And that Floating energetically, eh, just give me a bit of question. It's a quibble. Um, it's <laughs> it's it's really a fun. There's my heart soga. Uh, there is an explanation about words in the back, and even a recipe for making um, roti. So some of the words, um, like the steel pan, it's a musical instrument originating from Trinidad and Tobago. The steel pan falls into the idiophone family of instruments and is made from 55 gallon industrial drums to play in the Pythagorean musical cycle of fourths and fifths. So now you know, <laughs> C is for carnival. Speaking of parties, next up is After Parties, a collection of short stories. The author is Anthony Wiesna So. He is the, um, the gay son of Cambodian immigrants. He grew up in Stockton, California, and his characters in these stories are also um, mostly mostly queer, and certainly all of them are Cambodian. So some of the stories, I mean, I liked every one of the stories in here. Um, in the um, human development story, it really reminded me of other um, gay authors of color, like Billy Ray Balcourt, and Joshua Whitehead, and Tommy Pico, and um, Brandon Taylor. Uh, in that story, the central character has a desire to help his students to sniff out the nonsense of society. And to do that, he's going to have them read Moby Dick. <laughs> um, in the story, We Would Have Been Princes, the viewpoint alternates between two brothers. Um, and this, this one does take place in an after party after a wedding. Um, here's a line. Of course this party had ended with blood everywhere. He was born in the midst of chaos, so how the hell could he ever prevent it? Yeah, These, the stories are lightly interconnected, so some of the same characters show up um, in the different stories and it gives it a nice cohesive feel. Here we have volume three of Descender. So this volume is called Singularities. And it is by uh, Jeff Lemire and Dustin Nguyen. So at the end of volume two, there's a cliffhanger. 
This volume doesn't go past that cliffhanger. It is all the backstories of the different characters, including the robots. Um, I liked getting to know them. And uh, <laughs> one of the things I wondered about was the character Telsa and if her hair ever got messed up. And this, <laughs> this volume has the answers. So thank you, Dustin Nguyen, for showing me uh, her hair in other uh, hairstyles. And I will pop those images in here so you can see his art just keeps getting better and better. Um, and Jeff Lemire's storylines, superb. Last of all, here's the tiny poetry anthology. It's called 10 Poems About Trees. And there are just 10 poems in here. It is a beautiful um, edition with this cover art by um, Richard Simmel. And it's put out by Candle Candlewick Press in the UK. And the proceeds go to the Woodland Trust. It's a very lovely edition with this, even with a nice bookmark. And it was came to me um, in the mail as a gift from a dear friend, Kathy. And I love trees. I'm going to read these over and over again. That reminds me, in the Sigrid Nunes book, uh, the narrator is talking to someone who's complaining about um, the cost of books and that some books you pay 20 bucks for them and they don't even you know last you a weekend because they're so short and um, even a book of poetry can cost 20 bucks and and this person is saying like who would pay that for poetry and uh, <laughs> the narrator says something along the lines of not many people <laughs> yeah all right well you get your money's worth if you read them over and over. And um, yeah, that's what I'm going to be doing with this. Thank you, everybody. Thanks for watching another edition of Friday Reads. Here, Frida, say hello. <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> Can you see her? There she is. Bye, everyone. See you next time.